That what, PewDiePie was real dumb? Yeah. Can you ask Asana, you- socialist policies have nothing to do with Venezuela's economic collapse. You let him get away with misinformation the other day in your stream. For someone who says he doesn't like to... Pro- um, if you want to link me something credible that's not from Breitbart, we can go over it. I mean, we did a little bit of reading into Venezuela. I don't... I mean, it seems like they've used, like, socialized, um... Like, their oil industry for a long fucking time and shit. I never saw any evidence that socialism caused Venezuela's economic problems. It seemed like there was... It was more, like, <laughs> corruption-related. Wait, ask him what it, Ask him what percentage he thinks uh, the private industry is in, in, in Venezuela. Like, what percentage of the Venezuelan economy is privatized? Yeah, I don't know. Well, like their it's, largest, that I mean, largest oil company, which is like thirty or forty percent, I thought of their imports or whatever. Like that is a socialized thing, but that's yes, not socialized. They nationalized like the their seven- extraction industry. You yeah. know, another country that nationalized their extraction industry, dude, Norway. Sure. So yeah. that dude is speaking out of his goddamn ass. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I just, I never saw any real evidence that Venezuela is fucked because of socialism. I, I just don't see that. Anyway, um. Yeah, no, that's just memes, dude. Well, yeah, it's like the new conservative talking point whenever you're like, oh, yeah? You want to do single payroll healthcare? Well, look at what's happening to Venezuela. It's like, okay, dude. Yeah, no, I I, um, I did a video a while back on it called um, The Republican Despacito. So whenever someone fucking, um, I think I even mentioned it in the Charlie Kirk debate, where it's like, whenever someone mentions Venezuela, it's always the same shit. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, but like, don't absolve the um, don't absolve the Venezuelan government of guilt either. Though they are they are certainly bad. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, as Matt says, he is Venezuelan and wants to get on Discord. Um, are you able to go to my Discord room? Me? Yeah, you can see it like in my Discord, right? The room that says Destiny's room. Oh my God! Do you want me to debate one of your Venezuelan fans right now? Yeah, sure. Or I'll do it. I don't care. I'm curious. No, I don't want. I don't want to do it because I'm eating. Okay. I well, bring eaten. him in. And we'll end with chat. I'm going to Destiny's room. Please, Destiny, don't call gamer bros stupid. You're making stupid people look bad. Sad face. Sad face. I'm here. I'm gonna go grab a diet coke really quick. Yeah, you do that, motherfucker. <laughs> Oh no. What? I'm just so tired. I've been fucking debating dipshits all day. Well, not dipshits, they're fine. <laughs> okay. I'm sure, they mean well. Oh yeah. Oh, of yeah. course they do. Of course they do. Alright, is your guy here? Um, I don't know. He joins the Discord, I'll drag him in. I don't know what his username is. Join general lobby, buddy, and I'll drag you in. If you mine these oxalites to release all the oxygen, do you get like less total oxygen out of doing it? I feel like the answer to that was yes. Damn, bro, what is he fucking? Is he trying to? Is he trying to reach out all the way from Venezuela, dude? Listen, he's coming. I'm Got sure. that Venezuelan internet, buddy. <laughs> he's coming, man. Yeah, there's dead air. You dumb motherfucker. It's because I'm eating for the first time. I've been Destiny streaming nonstop since how big fucking his Chad 12, dick is, bitch. Please. This is the first Damn. food I've had. Alright, what's up, buddy? Suck my entire asshole. Sorry. Okay, not, do not. I have to just mute the stream? Can, can you listen? Can you hear me? Yeah, I think I can hear you. Oh, okay. Oh, well, listen, I... I've listened to you, like, for quite a bit. I think you've moved me, or given me, like, a better um, Understanding of leftist positions, I guess. No leftists, so more to the left, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, I'm Venezuelan, and, and of course I have a pretty big, uh, like, <clears throat> hatred boner against the government here. Sure. So yeah, it is funny that Hassan says like socialism has nothing to do with what happened here. <clears throat> like for example, the government, uh, he's saying like, okay, that. Most of the industries are, are in private hands. Yeah, but the government 
was in uh, nationalizing yeah. industries like Los Andes and other industries they, that was like for food and basically controlling all the companies with price controls. So I don't know how can you, how can well, you say that source that's I mean, socialist ha Hasn't your nothing. government been doing this for a long time? What, like No, before Chavez? No. And before Chavez, and the funny thing is that he conflates with the Scandinavian governments that have like um, education and health like healthcare for free, like it, like it is the same kind of socialism. It isn't because before Chavez there was a education for free here and it was healthcare as well. So he was basically talking to the socialism that is real socialism. This is basically taking over a means of production to the government basically and it's not just that they he, that they nationalize people, um, a lot of industries they they also control basically uh, how much people other companies could sell and if they didn't um, comply with those orders they basically well just uh, threaten them so well, if they didn't comply, they, they get nationalized. They okay, so like, them. just looking up real quick, I see that like, um, so Chavez came in in 99. Um, yeah. <laughs> I thought your oil industry had been nationalized since like the late 70s. Like your largest oil company and everything was nationalized. The oil, yeah, the, I'm, I'm not really sure, but yeah, the oil industry probably was so always... It seems like the, the problem the isn't like inherent to socialism, no? Isn't, doesn't the problem have to do with like other aspects of the government? No, they basically fucked up the economy with the socialist policy. And when, when they took over, I, I'm not really sure. I'm really not sure about the PDVSA thing because I, I guess I didn't really pay much attention. But he basically fired all the competent um, engineers and everything that they were working in PDVSA at that moment and replaced it with a lot of people and despots. And Everything he's saying is over. true, but what does that have to do with, but, but how is that socialism? Okay, they, they nationalized a bunch of industries. Well, but I they, know, they were but already, a lot of this was already the... nationalized, no? No, they weren't nationalized before. The only thing was that the, the, you can argue is the petroleum thing, but the other, like food, and they nationalized several industries, and the other ones, they were not allowed to compete in free market. They were imposed... Um, uh, price controls, so they were sell, uh, the, the, the name for the price controls were fair price, precio justo. Fair price is basically, I oh, know you have to sell at this price or you get fucked and you will get nationalized if you, you don't. You un um, the, the, the reason why I compare uh, Venezuela to, uh, sorry, Norway, is because Norway also has nationalized its extraction industry, okay? So okay. I, I think that is a, is an acceptable comparison because Norway is a social democracy, and no, well, I don't Venezuela know, but... is also a social democracy and not a socialist country. But it was a, if, there, if, so you know better you, than I do. You, if you say that basically that education and healthcare is a social democracy, Venezuela was a social democracy before Chavez because the, I I and my family as well they graduated from university like for free. I, I also graduated for free in an university. It's not just free college and sure. free education. And also... And, what, and I, everything and everything wasn't like free. Of course, there's private uh, universities, but it's not that everything <laughs> was so free. They were allowed to compete and everything. But after Chavez took took over, they he basically made a shit show with the economy. Also, the, the, this was really, really... Um, dangerous and with the economy was that the, he took the like um the the currency control about uh, the dollars and basically put a fixed price for the dollars like i don't okay. know the, the, the Again, real change. You're, you're giving like one truth and then and then, and then one the the thing that he's talking about right now is true the previous thing about chavez ruining the country uh you need to provide more evidence for that uh if i'm not mistaken uh, I, I believe. Yeah, because uh, you're, the, you're just want were... to go into apologetics for all the shitty decisions. No, 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 no. I don't. 
Okay, I'm so not, my main question not. is, it seems like something that spurred on a lot of the Venezuelan shit was a lot of the shortages that were starting to happen. What caused the, the shortages? The, the, short, the, just, the shortages was worth like in 2013 or something. Um, and it was basically because <clears throat> uh, by, the companies left the country. There was no fucking toilet paper because all the companies just went to Colombia or other, mm-hmm. other countries. And... <clears throat> Because they were uh, basically working here at a, at a loss because the fair price they they can make any winnings from that and they just fucking yeah I'm saying I'm the, sorry when you say fair so when you say fair price were these price controls that the government enacted to say that something must be sold at a certain cost is that yes okay, yes I understand yes and they threatened the company so they if they don't sell at that price and also that causes short shortages because the companies have no fucking incentive to produce anything. And that also causes people to fucking panic and go and basically buy everything they fucking can to sell it because it is fucking um, scarce and fucking sell it at high prices. So, I don't know, making making what they can do money with, with the situation like it is. A lot of the stuff that you're mentioning, by the way... Um, you need to you need to clarify. Are you referencing what Chavez's reforms were about, or are you referencing what Maduro is doing? Because there's a difference. Um, and if I'm not, not mistaken, Chavez. again, you're from I you're from it. the area. I know, yes. but a, a lot of the stuff that you're referencing uh, makes it seem as uh, like the things that you're referencing aren't necessarily all uh, all <laughs> things that Chavez did. I thought currency mismanagement largely happened under uh, Maduro and not necessarily under Java. No, no, you're you're mistaken. So it seems like in in the literally like four paragraphs I've read Mm. and then in listening to this, it seems like the problem is that um, Venezuela, for some dumb reason, I don't know, I don't like price controls, but it sounds like Chavez was implementing Mm -hmm. severe price controls um, I, I imagine like it was, yeah, probably to make it so you guys could afford stuff or some dumb shit or whatever, whatever you, for whatever yes. reason, people do price controls because they sell, they sell good to the people. And then what happened yeah, was companies was started really to, populist. yeah, uh, yeah, populist, yeah. So companies started to leave the country as a result of that. Um, and then because companies are leaving and the price controls aren't being renegotiated, you end up having severe shortage, shortages and supplies. Then a lot of people start to panic, and then more industries become nationalized in order to control this, and then shit kind of spirals out of control. And and then you try to manipulate your currency too much and now like the inflation rates are out of control and everything is kind of spiraling down from no there. they they had no they had no fucking care because they just want to be populist they print a lot of money to cover for their own expenses and basically mm-hmm. throw all the people into poverty by by printing yeah. and printing money for the right so it looks and like basically yeah my, it, yeah my parents okay they work all of their lives mm-hmm. and i'm sorry hello yeah, it's okay. It's not good. Yeah, it sounds like your currency is t- to be inflated like a million percent next year, which puts it on track with post World War One Germany and Zimbabwe, apparently. Jeez. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, fuck. Um, <clears throat> I'm also sorry for my English. It's not my first language, but no, I think fine. I can ask this. It's great. Do you still okay. have these price controls but yeah, it, into your economy, or have they rolled these back yet? No, they don't roll back anything. They they, they always will blame is, everything. Um, in. Uh, Nicolas is it Maduro? 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 I can't roll my eyes. Yeah, um, Maduro. Oh. Yeah. Is this guy um, a populist as well, or is he... Yeah, of course. I mean, he's, if Chavez was a fucking idiot, he's, he's like... He has like 10% of his IQ. <laughs> Like, okay. fucking hell. Like, you, if you were here in fucking Venezuela, you would be, like, far right <laughs> or yeah. something. Gotcha. Okay. Printing money is something yeah, that the United I, States does almost all the fucking time. No, I'm not, um, saying, yeah, I'm yeah. not saying printing money And the reason why they did it is so that uh, the poor people also had access to... Uh, food. Whoa, wait, 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 w
that printing is not done as a crisis play in order to save our economy. The United States doesn't print money as in crisis to save our economy. Um, even the 2007 downturn was not like an extreme crisis where we had to save ourselves in the same way that in Venezuela, there are people standing in line for hours to buy fucking toilet paper. So even though no, the U.S. prints money, yeah, when, when, when Venezuela was printing money, they were doing it to literally bail themselves out of a fuck situation, but they did not have the same strength of their economy, so their bond ratings went to shit as a result of this bad monetary policy. Whereas in the U.S., we can print money, and, and that's fine. It's backed by our economy. Venezuela didn't have the economy to back that currency yes, printing. Yes, because th well, this is, again, uh, look, not to be like the mm -hmm. fucking classic uh, leftist guy who's like, well, imperialism does definitely have a, a significant burden, uh, it plays a significant burden. Uh, not only did we have sanctions, but the United States also tried to back a coup in Venezuela. I believe under mm -hmm. uh, under Chavez, they, um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe they, they succeeded once. There was an um, attempt of a coup in 2002, I think. There is an in attempt. Mexico. Yeah, there was an attempted coup. And also, uh, beyond that, there's like a severe, I mean, they, they placed sanctions upon Venezuela. This is a, if this is a dying country, uh, then the United I States don't absolutely know. no 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 the sanctions, the United States were, absolutely. the sanctions are not within the economy of Venezuela. The okay. sanctions are to the the people of the government that have assets in in the United States and they basically have their all their money there. The sanctions are against them. They are not against the economy. So don't sure. Mean, okay, so real quick, so without without um. So the, the the central thing that that I would want to address if if we were if this was a formal debate is were sure. price controls the primary thing that caused Venezuela to get fucked from from, from very preliminary shit that's it kind of what it looks like to it me. Is, it is a combination. I can I can uh, accept that there's a combination that basically they create an environment with price controls and currency controls. Currency controls are very very distortionary to the economy because they basically. I don't know the the price of the of of one dollar here. I don't know was twenty. Mm -hmm. It was the it's, real price, look, and they basically it, put it at two. Yeah. And you know the the companies here had to ask the government to give them a an um annual annual yearly okay. yearly yearly uh, basically they had to ask the fucking government for mm -hmm. uh. Uh, an amount of dollars yearly and you know that breaks a lot of corruption as well because you basically have the the the, the government taking control of the currency and for venezuelans as well i i could bueno people here can, could not buy dollars because they if they had their money because they they are basically putting a price like that is unreasonable unreasonably low to basically pay for their own programs and stuff and basically fuck all the, all the other country because yeah I, I could only buy I could only buy like four hundred dollars a year mm -hmm. or people and it was like yeah you could not access another currency here because they, they are controlling controlling the currency as well. Okay. And well what I was going to say is that they're controlling the currency. They're controlling basically at what price the companies can sell their, their stuff. And they have to ask the, the government as well for, for money to be able to import and to work. And that created a shit show of corruption as well. Okay, o of course, okay. corruption has to do as well with the collapse. But because if there was no uh, currency control and no price control and not all, all that centralization in the government, there's, there's, there was no incentive to, of corruption. And they basically, yeah, they basically have access to all the power and corruption everywhere because they implemented those socialist policies. That, that okay. okay. Can I can I get in a, a couple words? Uh, look again. Um, you're like I, I, I'm I'm sympathetic to what you're talking about. Um, I'm not a I'm not an apologist for for uh, Maduro. My understanding is, and again, I might be completely incorrect, but my my understanding is that. Um, that <clears throat> uh, first of all, the the fixed prices that you're talking about, sure, that's a, that that played a that played a part in um, that a that was role. certainly an issue. Mm -hmm. But my understanding is that uh, having a, a, an entire economy heavily reliant on oil extraction and and a in a looming financial crisis actually. Uh, yeah, if you look there, wait, 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 let him finish. Let him finish. Having your entire social spendings, uh, having your entire social spending. Um, 
uh, try to cover all of the social programs that you're trying to send. Uh, that, I mean, all the social programs that you're trying to spend money on. Uh, and then and then having capital flight as a consequence of that. Don't, wait, wait, wait. Uh, don't, while, while you're nationalizing specific private industries. Don't all is, of the OPEC countries essentially do or don't a lot of i'm sorry i shouldn't say opec but don't a lot of opec countries do this like saudi arabia a lot of the yeah. gold states don't they rely very heavily on oil i mean it seems like they do okay yeah no that's the well that's the point i was trying to make is that yeah, this, and like the failures of the failures of a government um or the failures of one administration are not essentially especially if they have nothing to do with um especially if they have nothing to do with um um, like seizing the means of production, uh, aside from like nationaliz nationalizing um, the the uh, nationalizing the the extraction industries, and then filling those positions with like fucking uh, loyalists rather than actual mm -hmm. uh, petrol engineers. So is is just is just poor shitty fucking management. Is poor shitty management. Uh, done by uh, Maduro, and I'm not certain that Chavez did that, but yeah. So I don't uh, think maybe, the problem yeah, the problem doesn't seem to be the problem doesn't seem to be so much like socialism or whatever. The the, the from what I, from just a very fucking brief, and I could be wrong. I'll I'll watch some videos on this tonight. The problem seems to be enacting extreme price controls. It seems like that kind of set things on a really bad downward spiral. Um, and as a big capitalist, I guess, although you could still be socialist and say that price controls are bad well, as well. How huh? can you how can you do uh, the socialist uh, mm -hmm. socialism of 2021 like Chavez called it so um, right, go ahead. how could you do that without he he was nationalizing industries yeah so like my I, yeah, and I could be wrong case, wait, 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 I could be wrong and I'm not I'm not saying the the petroleum the oil yeah. stuff I'm saying uh, food companies and other companies that basically here they and with the price control they were, okay they, so they, 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 they yeah okay so Capitalism, um, we, we have firms that compete against one another, um, and it's capitalism because you've got capital owners that own the actual factories, the actual firms, and you've got yeah. laborers that work there. Now, it's my understanding that in a socialist system, all of these firms could be owned by the workers, but they could still compete with each other in price. Just because you have firms that are owned by the workers doesn't necessarily mean you also need government price controls, yep. right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And the reason why, and the reason why I mentioned Norway again and again and again, mm -hmm. and you mentioned the OPEC countries as well, is that nationalization of an extraction industry uh, is is something that a lot of nations have done successfully. So to turn around and be like, well, this is socialism in Venezuela because they did that, but it's not socialism in any of these other countries where it's successful, is a disingenuous argument. Now, it, it, again, I'm I'm completely sympathetic to to um, to the plight that you've gone through. I, I understand. I'm not. Again, I keep saying like I'm not a, a Maduro apologist at all, but. To say that this is a, a consequence of socialism and, and then uh, mention specifically all of the wrongdoings of Maduro uh, seems a little uh, interesting. No, but the problem is that you are only saying the, the, the oil stuff. You're not saying all, all, all the other nationalizations of other companies of products and, and you food. And basically controlling the economy with price controls and threatening... Uh, okay, you can say that they are not nationalizing other industries, but they're threatening them that if they don't comply with the price controls, they, they are going to take the companies away from them. Yeah, so the way that... Without it seems any like, compensation. It seems like a really kind of fine, like, a, or a nitpicky point, but I guess, like, if I, in my... um. In, in my trying to be economically correct, I feel like the problem isn't necessarily socialism or capitalism or whatever, but the, the, the bad economic policy. I don't like, I think price controls are bad. I haven't read Marx though. I, and someone in chat is saying that Marx says that if you have a socialist economy, it would have to be planned, which I think implies price controls. But um, having like... Um, yeah, but socialism is basically centralization of the economy. No? Well, does it, it, does it have to be? I don't know. I could be wrong, but yeah, I, I was but under the, the impression this, that you could have... Some, that you get a this thing that people. workers are going to to take over the company is kind of weird. The, when they say their people are going to control the companies, they're basically saying the government because yeah, no. who is going to be? On I don't. I don't think that's necessarily true. Does it have to be? Can, couldn't you have right. a, a democratically elected government that doesn't own, that doesn't nationalize like industries, but still have firms that are owned by the workers? Or is this kind of like a weird mix thing? What do you government? mean? What do you mean owned by the workers? Are they going to topple the the? Well, not like the, the capital owners of the company by themselves. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. I don't know how. how Anarcho-syndicalism is what Destiny's referencing. It's like it's a concept where you. 
where you essentially apply the same uh, characteristics of a government uh -huh. to your workplace, where people have uh, representation, where they have, uh, where they also, uh, where they also uh, own a piece of the business. Um, so that's that's what you're that it is a it is still a, it's still a, a socialist concept. There are many yeah. different concepts to achieve uh, like socialism. I mean, achieve socialism. This is just one of them. Mm -hmm. No, I, I what Noam Chomsky uh, pushes for. Gotcha. Yeah, well, I I don't know. It's just socialism has like this weird thing that there is like I don't know means whatever people wants to want want to to mean in that moment. I don't know. I go by the by the definition of the <laughs> like the first definition that is basically. Okay, the people or the workers controlling the means of production, and that's sure. basically done through the government. I guess. Um, and I guess the fr the kind of frustrating thing is when you talk about economic policy like this. Um, it seems like there are things that can work and things that can't work, but people are very quick to throw out some things because they've been tried in some ways that doesn't work. Like I don't see as somebody that is ardently capitalist, I can see that it is possible that socialism could theoretically work in some in some countries. But if you're going to be doing price controls, they have to be set for very intelligent reasons. Um, so for instance, like minimum wage policies are a form of price yeah, control. Times of crisis or war, normally, like it's not. Well, yeah, but like in general, price controls are distortionary to an economy, and I think you need a very intelligent reason to levy a price control. So, for instance, in the United States, we have minimum wage policies, which is a price control, which I would normally be against. But it seems like in the United States, laborers aren't effectively able to bargain against um, capital owners for wages. So, instituting that price control makes sense there, and it ends up benefiting everybody. Um, laborers earn more money, capitalists are able to sell more product because people have more money, and everybody kind of does better as a result. But it seems like Venezuela tried to implement price control that were fucking disastrous that were totally unrealistic that nobody could match and as soon as companies started to piece the fuck out of the country nobody was willing to reevaluate these price controls and then things spiraled into the fucking shit that's going no, on now they will, they will always have the boogeyman of the, there's an economic war sure. and that the, and that there is is the fault of the imperialists when yeah. everyone knows even here in Latin America that that is just bullshit and then once you try to supplement your bad your bad economic policy with even worse monetary policy, right? When you're trying to compensate your bad price controls with uh, with currency manipulation, it's you, you don't have the economy to back that printing up. And you're, yeah, it seems like a really fucking. It seems. I mean, the, I, the, it seems really bad. Yeah, and look, I can uh, um, concede to a little bit that there's the 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 people implementing this here were really really shitty but mm -hmm. to a certain extent socialist policies are basically centralization with the government open the door sure. for a lot of corruption and manipulation and uh, pa power games as well yeah and populism yeah. because they basically printed money to um to not to stop the social programs they were doing mm -hmm. and they were doing social programs like okay let's give people some uh, they were called missions um, like some education and we're going to pay them. It was not that they were going to um, go to educate themselves like uh, alphabetization because they were going to pay them as well To because they basically and they were always like giving um, washing machines and TVs and stuff to basically buy voters all the Yo, time. That's, that's a meme, dude. Come on. That's not. What, what like, do you, what I, do you think mean? Erdogan does it too. Erdogan does it too. That's not enough. That what you're I don't know who does it. I don't know who does anything. No, 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 no. Hold on. The reason why I'm saying that. The reason why I'm saying that is like, <clears throat> one, that has nothing to do with socialism. What you're no, referencing no, is not, that. What, what you're referencing is an authoritarian. Uh, I mean, not a, even an authoritarian, but a, a terrible Look, leader. I'm, but I secondly, wasn't saying that it was secondly, socialism. the reason why I'm the reason why I'm pushing back on it is because. Um, while that is a, a, a significant amount of spending, an entire nation isn't going bankrupt because uh, the, the leader is, is buying washing machines for some of the citizens to go out and vote for him. Um, wouldn't you say that, that, that the, the price of oil dipping uh, is a, they is a, had a lot of, much uh, bigger, had, has had a much a bigger consequence on, on, an entire economy that, on an entire economy that relies heavily on that single resource? No, I I understand that selling, the buying and selling the economy here is a fucking deep shit. But you you need to take this into account. When when Chavez was in power, the petroleum, the oil prices were fucking high, super high for all the time he was in power. 
if it was a fucking responsible government, it was it was it, it was like expected for this country to get better, and he managed to basically make it fucking worse with the basically historically. Uh, um, uh, how do I say uh, income of the country? I don't know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think yeah, the frustrating to, to represent, like real quick for Hassan's side, and I guess for my side, um, the frustrating thing is when it's levied as an attack on, I guess, like socialism isn't as entirely as it. People, first of all, fucking people, any type of government spending apparently is what people mean when they say socialism. Is that there are good ways and there are bad ways to do certain no, things, even when it I'm, comes to things like price controls. Like the price controls may have fucked your country, but in an area like say the United Kingdom, price controls levied by the NHS, their national healthcare system, um, are actually incredibly beneficial. I think that's just the uh, that's the frustrating part yeah. when people use Venezuela as like a catch-all to levy and attack. I mean nationalizing private private companies. That's sure. what I mean when sure. with socialism, because yeah, there was uh, free education and free healthcare here before Chavez. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was socialism basically the the nationalizing industries that they thought that they were like doing their fair job or something and screwing up all the economy with their policies in the name of socialism maybe you can say that it's not socialism but Mm -hmm. that's what yeah no i definitely i i understand the frustration um yeah, I understand the frustration. I just think it's really important to be careful, uh, I guess, how the attack is levied. Because um, I, I do the same thing when I have to defend capitalism all the time with all of its inherent flaws. Is I usually have to say, okay, well, sure, this is a bad thing about capitalism. It might not account for this externality. However, um, you know, we can augment certain government policies to try to incorporate these things. You know, like, for instance, you know, some people can't afford housing or can't afford healthcare education. And I know I'm pro capitalism, but I acknowledge these faults and then we can do this. So it just sucks when people use, like, you know, someone will they're like, hey, we should try single pair healthcare, and they're like, huh, look at what's going on in Venezuela. Do you want to eat rats? And I was like, fuck. Well, I mean, like Jesus Christ, you know. Like, I guess yeah, that's like I the frustrating. Part, I understand. You know? dude, I understand why you take a lot of you take it as a meme. Yeah. This kind of what um kind what do you, of, what do you do in Venezuela uh, now? Like, what, what is the average person like? What is it like in a day to day life? Like, I can imagine having an inflation of like a million percent. Like, does your money mean nothing, or what? What, what is that like living day to day? Like, if you go out to eat, like, how does? Are it you work? in Venezuela right now? Yeah, I'm in Caracas right now. I'm not from Caracas, but I'm living here. Mm-hmm. And well, I'm kind of lucky basically because I I program, so I program for a, for other people in another country, so I can get a decent income, like for here in Venezuela. But because when I work here in Venezuela as a as a software developer. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I was earning like I don't know, thirty dollars a month. I was gonna something. say, has your income do they give you massive pay raises? Like like a thousand percent pay raises every year or what how does that work? Yeah, but they don't keep up with the inflation. So like I'm just it's curious, just... like what was your starting wage? How much were you being paid per month and like how much are you being paid now? Like how much has that changed? No, well, now I I'm telling you that I'm not working for for like a company here in Venezuela. I'm in Venezuela, but I'm working he, with he internet works for, yeah, he works for uh, foreign um, for a company in Uruguay. Yeah. Don't they? What do they and, do? Um, don't you? Doesn't your country have like weird controls on like foreign currency and shit now? Or am I? Yeah, but I don't. I, I can have a. I cannot have a, a bank account in a different currency here. Oh, so I you can just have get paid one in Venezuela associated with the government. Okay, and you get paid in like I Venezuelan have... currency, whatever you're. No, because I got uh, an account uh, for from Puerto Rico, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. What percentage of the Venezuelans to... would you say have um, as much uh, wealth as you do currently in the country? Holy shit! I don't know, like. Like what percent? What's oh, your what's your income bracket in comparison to the rest of Venezuela? You said five percent. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of speculative. But people that work in here, like I worked, like I I've been working online like for two years. Mm-hmm. But before that, it was like thirty dollars a month. Okay, the prices here were like lower, but that just gave you like to rent a room, not an apartment, a room. Mm-hmm and to basically eat and that was for a software developer the other people were like like living on half of that i don't know how gotcha well damn okay 
So what's the um? But yeah, it is. <clears throat> it is really upsetting, and I know I'm sorry for uh, um getting emotional with my family. No, it's fine. And dude. that is because. <clears throat> because again, okay, my parents worked all their lives <clears throat> for the government to basically render, <clears throat> render, render all the, all their savings, um, basically null with with all the inflation. Basically. Yeah, most of your savings are all going to be like in the Bolivares or whatever, right? In your yeah, I'm, I'm, I basically escaped that by working for another uh, country but mm -hmm. uh, people here basically yeah they they work for nothing to survive and they can say because the inflation eats up them gotcha so yeah i'm basically the one uh, helping my family okay i mean it's not <laughs> i mean yeah the situation is pretty harsh here but but yeah, that, 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 what, that's what is pretty upsetting, that people that have worked all their lives can have savings because... Yeah, because it's all going to be worthless. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like, yeah, you basically had, let, let's say you <clears throat> managed to get, for example, a hypothetical, uh, had the money for a car and basically like it was 50000 and in a month the same car it was like ninety thousand or a yeah. hundred thousand and yeah you can it, it, people just buy assets so they didn't depreciate i know in, in the united states basically a car is a depreciating asset and it's something very that slowly you, though yeah that yeah that you basically you buy you classic car guy preserve money but in venezuela you basically buy uh bought cars and well cars people that could or other stuff that was like physical so your money wouldn't mm -hmm. go into what were you saying Hassan? going no i was just making fun of you destiny because you were uh you said cars depreciate uh value very slowly like you had to add in the very slowly in there because you're a car guy but it's fine oh, I was no, just no, trying uh, to make it... well no no I, i'm sorry i was adding it in ah. because like our depreciation of vehicles isn't like theirs where the assets are depreciating because the currency is like going crazy or or the, the, it was different because he said no, like no, a no, car they, would they, cost like forty thousand like one month and then ninety thousand the next or whatever like the the way that it works the, in this isn't like they're crazy the car is not depreciating it's yeah not, not the car but the currency your money basically yeah 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 <laughs> so you can sell it when you need the money again if you can't buy like dollars or something to to preserve your own money yeah well so yeah i, I got a little bit upset with hassan and and saying Wait, that socialism had nothing to do with us um Please. go get him hassan just fucking lay it just end this dude what <laughs> No, I'm not gonna say anything, man. I, I, I just, I, all I was. <laughs> no, I mean, I, 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 he lives in Venezuela. Like, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be like, oh, you're, you're wrong. He's just, he already admitted to the, to the things that I took issue with, and there's no reason to fucking, uh, move the. Uh, there's no reason to have a conversation beyond that. Yeah. Where? No, I think we all um, understand each other, right? Like, yeah. My, my assessment is that my, my assessment and, and uh, our friend's assessment here is, is nearly identical. I just don't consider that uh, to be socialism. Or if it was considered to be socialism, then uh, then all of these other countries would be socialist as yeah, well. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. That have uh, very similar, that have done very similar things, whether it be price management um, or, uh, or, or nationalization of specific industries. And yet they seem to be successful versus mm -hmm. uh, this one country has not been successful. Um, but the reason for why it's not successful isn't there's still a, it's a state yeah, yeah, capitalist yeah, yeah, nation. It, yeah. And it's but not. I, I still take issue with the specific industries. They, they are taking companies that sell food and all their stuff. Yeah, like what, what, they're, they're, if I'm not mistaken, Maduro like, uh, it took stocks, right? Used the army to... to um, Okay. Uh, uh, Chavez was the one that nationalized a bunch of stuff. No, I'm not. I'm not talking about um, Chavez's uh, nationalization. I'm talking about uh, food shortages caused literally artificially ca uh, artificial food shortages caused by the government. Um, but maybe I. Uh, oh, 
maybe you can speak to that. Maybe I'm incorrect about that. Yeah, just please don't just don't dismiss it. Like, it, yeah, it has nothing to do. It has to do with it. Like, yes, there is corruption, of course. There is mismanagement, but also there's the policies and taking over companies, like socialism, like the purest form of socialism and mandates. It has to do with it. I mean. Yeah, and then okay. my, my response or my issue would be it's not in intrinsically socialism. It's just these were bad policies. Like, even if you're even if your country would have remained completely capitalist, um, setting these same price controls would have driven corporations to leave the country, and you would have been just as fucked. So I mean, like, it seems like the, I don't the, know if you can if you can say that saying price controls is capitalism. socialism. I don't saying price controls is socialism, or saying nationalizing specific industries is socialism is like saying. Uh, a public education is uh, a public education and and uh, public health care or like universal health care is uh, is socialism when um, and you are the one who admitted or originally that before Chavez they already had public education so why yes. don't you consider that to be socialism but then other like higher levels of socialization because I'm talking about the, the economy market, and the free country. market economy and that's that's what I don't know I don't know if capitalism means that the economy is free market or not, like in I know the, the reasonable regulations, but basically when you're putting price controls, it's not free market capitalism at, at all. And basically, uh, it's like national. It's like it's like the the, the, the national socialists that basically control the, the economy by putting um, I don't know, or basically telling the companies what to do and what price to sell. Yeah, they're not nationalizing, but they're basically controlling the economy. That's not free market capitalism. Wait. Um, wait for can it. you repeat that last part again? I'm, I'm confused. Like, are you saying that it, Venezuela didn't adhere to free market uh, capitalist principles and that's why they, uh, they're, they're suffering? Is that why you, did I understand that correctly? At least the economy suffered because of that, because it the country basically the government basically told them at what price to sell and what to do and and if they didn't they were okay, going but, to be nationalized that's not that's not free market okay but what what is free market then because uh because what you're referencing happens everywhere including in the united states uh not to that same extent maybe or, or not a, i don't know how to help with that yet what the fuck yo what is going on right now my google home just that was scary as shit. Sorry about that, guys. I, my Google Home just started talking on its own, and now I have to. Uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go turn that off. But uh, the point I was making uh, was, fuck. Uh, the point I was making is that uh, like that 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 free market capitalist structure that you're referencing does not exist in the United States either. The wait, what? Which free market capitalist structure? Well. Is the government telling with the companies what price to sell the things? Um, we do for um, how do we do this? Don't we? I don't know if it's the same thing. So like for food, for agriculture, they, we subsidize a lot of products. We subsidize we agricultural production, production and mm -hmm. and we almost subsidize, we subsidize a lot of stuff, including uh. I don't think a subsidization oil, is necessarily the same as a price control, though. It's a. No, I don't it think, isn't. Or it's not. Yeah. Um, and they and they basically put the price controls below the the what, what the, the market can sustain. Yeah, um, in the, the that's why the companies left. Yeah, the closest thing we have, like, why well, not say closest? But like, in, for the United States, our big price controls are things like rent in certain places. That's like a really big thing. Um, I don't know. Why don't they go empty this fucking toilet? And yeah, of course they and of course they did it with that's something that upsets because they do they do it like with this presumption of virtuousness that okay this is the fair price it's something that can be produced uh, with that, that basically is below the the, the production price basically mm -hmm. and yeah that's the fair price and that's what the people want. It was so. It was. It was really a shit show. Yeah. What do you What do you think is the uh, What do you think is the way out? Like, how do you How do you think Venezuela will be able to fix itself? Let's move past. Fix, like, let's move fix. past the fucking uh, the semantics and and whatever. It's fine. I'm not gonna like sit here and 
I'm not going to sit here and be like, that's not socialism to a person who's literally crying in Venezuela and is like suffering uh, and, and, and try to defend any elements of your country that I've never actually defended uh, up until okay, this okay, point. Okay, so okay, what's going on there? Well, how do we, how do we I, don't, I don't know because this government basically just, uh, they control like the, like, in one election, we uh, the opposition won like more seats in the national assembly, <clears throat> and they basically like they have control over the electoral. Uh, uh, I don't know how to say that, and the judiciary, the judicial system, and they basically made null all the decisions that the national assembly took, <laughs> and the, it's basically like uh, the. It's kind of a dictatorship, but may, uh, making it seem like it is democratic. People don't even vote anymore. Wait, you're so, saying people don't even vote in Venezuela anymore? Isn't wh am I crazy? Wasn't the uh, no, no, no. I don't mean I don't mean that there is no elections. I mean that the people they don't want to go to vote because there's no point anymore because they basically make uh, fraud in the elections all the time. Wait, really? Wasn't the participation pretty high in Venezuela? Or, no, that's oh, actually, really, never mind. That's really uh, it's, uh, it's really low. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Never mind. I'm totally wrong about that. You're right. It says Venezuelan vote turnouts 32% by 6 p.m. election board source. Yeah, that's fucking rem. Yeah. Wait, in the last presidential election, 2015, the the uh, the turnout was 80%. Yeah, uh, there was the one that. Uh, yeah, in 2018, it's, the 2018 is 47%. Yeah, that's. I mean, okay, by the way, just for everyone in the chat, uh, for everyone who's listening, the irony there, of course, is that uh, their, their, uh, their vote turnout is at 47% in Venezuela where uh, people lost 25 pounds over the course of, like, uh, uh, like the national average uh, weight loss is like 25 pounds versus in America, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, incredible dem dem the incredible beacon of light and hope and prosperity in the world, our voter turnout is like... Uh, 60% I believe if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that sounds but, really high 60%. I don't know if it's that high. I could be wrong Yeah, but here is because people it's not that they're not they don't want this government to change it because they basically gave up Yeah, okay. Ours oh shit. Like, I'm so I'm so wrong. It's about 50. I was so wrong. Well, it it's 49.3% uh, well, of the voting eligible population. Okay, okay I think that's for mid the midterms and then our presidential is about 55 56% Give or take, depending on the year. Um, let me find out. Midterm, voter, turnout. 2018, midterm. That's what I was... Well, I don't know. Oh, was that all-time <laughs> high? That's good, at least. I guess we... Yeah, it's 60%. Say... I was right. Um, the, originally, I was right uh, The uh, with the uh, with the elections. It is... Because I, I thought it was, like, super low, too. I thought it was, like... Well, for our midterms in 2014, our turnout was 39 percent. Yeah, no, that's not shocking at all. Uh, it's it's also it's also midterms. Yeah, but there maybe it's because some people don't care here. It's because people don't trust uh, the institutions, the elector, the electoral uh, institutions because they just mm -hmm. it's just a shit show. So wait, what do you what do you think your way? What like uh, I don't think I don't think there's a way out from Venezuela. Well, the way out <laughs> is you have to realize the people have to wake up. I, I think this these cycles kind of happen with populism, right? Basically, you get a guy that promises you the world that says that everybody else is an enemy of the people. Do you fucking expunge yeah, the, the fuck out of them? Yeah, the problem is yeah, but the then you real or go ahead. I'm sorry, Dustin. Um, oh yeah, no, go ahead. Uh, they basically uh, make the people really. That's something that I know. I know sometimes people dismiss it, but yeah, when people are made to be dependent on the government, they want to keep being dependent on the government as well. Yeah, and no, I don't deny that. I don't doubt that at all. But the problem is your government won't be able to deliver. A populist can never deliver. And at some point, even if you've become reliant on the government, you're not going to be able to continue to be because it won't be able to provide what you need, right? And then this is like the principal failing of populism is that eventually you realize, oh, wait, this guy can't change shit. And then you have to go back to whatever fucking new shit you go to or whatever you had before. 
Do you ever fear that? Uh, do you ever fear that uh, like foreign investment will will eventually take advantage of of the Venezuelan marketplace? Uh, come in, no. uh, maybe even like overthrow the Venezuelan government. Don't you think that that could potentially be uh, far worse? I mean, it's not going to be worse than your current situation, but like, uh, barring yeah, any other yeah. like positive it result, do you ever do you think of yeah, that? Would be in favor, I think. <laughs> like they're always asking the the UN. I don't know one of those organizations to make something, but it never happens. And well, there were a lot of protests like two years ago, a year ago, where it was for months and months. Uh, a lot of people died. Uh, it, nothing happened in the end. That's uh, me. <clears throat> people want like, yeah, they want some foreign intervention, I guess, but it is not possible. I don't know how. <clears throat> people just basically are leaving the country. I have like no friends left here, and I, uh, <clears throat> I will be trying to move uh, as soon as I can. Sure. <clears throat> but yeah, I understand your your concerns about other countries intervening into in, in here. But but yeah, people don't care <laughs> about that. They care that the sounds like Venezuela needs, needs some freedom, K Kona. <clears throat> and yeah, sorry, sorry for for getting fucking emotional about it. It's understandable, man. I get it. Trust me. I I uh, come. I came to the United States from a from a country that all that has a has a terrible uh, has terrible leadership as well. Not as it, the the economic situation is not as bad as it is in in Venezuela. At least of you course, you can have some trust in your institutions. Like they kind of work. Oh no, I, the institutions work, and there are certainly the Erdogan regime is certainly experimenting with higher levels of socialization. Whether it be like a, uh, moving towards like full uh, public health care and whatnot, but um, our economy is more diverse than than the Venezuelan economy is. Um, and uh, yeah, but yeah, no, yeah. capital flight is always going to be a risk in any nation, uh, and and. Not to be too much of a like, I don't want to get, I don't want to dive into like uh, things that might make me seem like a conspiracy theorist, but um, I would say that uh, Western invention certainly does happen in that in that way as well. Um, like, yeah, you understand. By way of uh, Can we corporate give this capital dude some credit. This is a really though topic for him to give insight on, and he is really um, reasonable. Uh, in Latin America. Imagine countries. how much productive conversation <laughs> we could have if more people were like viable. him. <laughs> Peppa hands. Yeah, but yeah, I, I understand your concern about the intervention and all this stuff, and that probably and basically uh, the United States has no, doesn't have like the best track record, but they also have help on other countries. Like I don't know South Korea. <laughs> It would be a shit show if you were for the United States. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Like I don't think like all the time the United States is in the wrong when intervening, but I know it is a sensitive topic to intervene in another fucking country. Like it is yours or something. But yeah, I, I don't know if you, you wanted to say another thing but i was a little bit livid about it <laughs> yeah that's fine i mean i think we understand each other pretty well okay then do do i leave or how do <laughs> yeah unless you have any final parting words or thoughts for us at all me oh. i got nothing oh i thought you were asking me okay no right. oh uh destiny i really appreciate your uh like giving me a little bit more um, insight or better articulation for left uh, the left side, basically. Yeah, no problem. Because, man. Yeah, and just has to be a little bit more careful with that. Damn. Yeah, um, sure. Uh, and and you take care of us all, man. Seriously. Um, you know, <clears throat> no problem. Man. Get better. I'm okay. 
at least I got a job in another country programming. <laughs> so I'm I'm pretty fine in in regards to Venezuelan standard. All right, cool. Well, thanks for the conversation, man. I appreciate it. Sure. All right. Bye. Yeah. All right. Well, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna dip out as well, thief. Unless you have uh, some stuff to tell me about uh, how much of an evil villain I am <laughs> um, for the things I advocate for. No, I think we're good. But <laughs> um. Anyway. All right. Well. Mm -hmm. Is that, that was a good talk. Yeah, thanks for the conversation, bud. Um, uh, I'll see you later, okay? Be careful. Where are you going? Uh, um, I don't know. I, I want to go out, but dude, I've been streaming since fucking... I've been streaming since 12 today. It's almost... I'm about to hit my 10th hour. This is like this is like real destiny hours, you know what I mean? Damn. Um, so it's just... Uh, it's, it's, you know, and I don't even play games, so I'm just like... I'm straight up just, uh, just talking for 10 hours, and then... And debated a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Finally, I got to eat a little bit. So that was good. Ironically. Yeah. While we were talking about a country that is starving. But, you know. Um, anyway. <sighs> All right. All right. I'm out. Right. We'll talk about the kill stream stuff. We'll talk about the kill stream stuff later. I'm going to send you some stuff. I want to send you some uh, reading materials on Ralph and, and the kill stream. Um, from... Encyclopedia Dramatica. If you want to go through it, it's oh, like. Uh, are you familiar with Encyclopedia Dramatica? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they have a uh, they have a lot of interesting uh, takes on on the kill stream. Yeah. So. Well, they're gonna be. Probably they're like the right version of um of uh rational wiki or whatever, right? Oh yeah, I mean they're. I mean, I would say rational wiki is also right. I, I would say Encyclopedia Dramatica is like not right. It's Dude, more than that. Duty. Oh. Okay. It's it's strong nationalism, as Richard Lewis would say. Gotcha. I mean, I have my strong. articles on Encyclopedia Dramatica are pretty fucking extreme, so. No, oh, I haven't seen you. I didn't even know that you had articles on there. No, oh, yeah, I'm pretty I, sure I'm I, like I a mean, pedophile like, rapist or whatever, some shit on there, so, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. It's all it's all fucking Nazi shit. Like, if you look up, like, uh, they have, like, special, special sections dedicated to Jews and stuff. It's very, mm -hmm. it's really, really, it's, it's, you know. Yeah. Like I said, Richard Lewis would consider it strong nationalism. Sure. Yeah. Um, Richard Spencer, right? I, no, no, no. Richard, no, no, no. Richard Lewis, RL. Oh. He. It's a meme from when we had a conversation. I was like, "What do you think, uh, Trump tear gas? I mean, what do you think Trump sending military to the border is?" And he oh, said, "It's yeah. shoring up the borders." And uh, what do you think Trump saying? Uh, I'm a nationalist. It's not a bad word. Uh, like, what do you think all of this, uh, you know, adds up to? And he was like, "Oh, it's just strong nationalism." Mm -hmm. Gotcha. That's what I was. That's what I was memeing. Anyway, all right. Um. Have fun, dude. Yeah, be careful, mate. All right. <laughs> I will. All right, bye. All right, let's listen to this real quick. This meant that the government in Caracas used its foreign reserves to buy its own currency, the Bolivar, in order to stabilize the currency. This economic policy is practiced throughout the world and it's basically the government manipulating the value of its currency to its own citizens. And obviously controlling the currency rate by artificial means is not all that effective. But it That is not true. Um, unless I'm being uncharitable. Manipulating your own currency is incredibly effective. There's a reason why like every major country today practices this in central banking. Unless I misunderstood him reserves to buy its own currency the Bolivar in order to stabilize the currency. This economic policy is practiced throughout the world and it's basically the government manipulating the value of its currency to its own citizens. And obviously controlling the currency rate by artificial means is not all that effective. Fuck, I always get nervous when I hear something that sounds really fucking wrong, but I'm trying to learn from the rest of the video because I don't know how much else is true or not. Uh, okay. But it was a start because inflation did drop, and so the government decided to um, pursue this Justin, strategy by establishing- Oh shit, hello? I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't leave the oh, room. what's up, buddy? Um... With the with the currency control, there uh, me 
-hmm. let me mute the stream with the currency control like there was like there's like the reserves the money that that, that was like estimated in in dollars i guess like it was <clears throat> let's say we had 30 thirty thousand dollars but it's just a hypothetical hypothetical as like thirty thousand dollars like Dad, uh, the country uh, uh, like uh, the uh. reserves and like the money the money that, that was in transit that was in bolivars let's say it was thirty thousand as well so in that in that case when there was no currency control it was like you could buy one dollar for one bolivar let's say okay but they they say they they began <coughs> printing money okay now the 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 to buy one dollar you had to pay 10 bolivars okay but then they imposed a currency control that basically said no the 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 price of the of the dollar is two but the but the, basically the currency that was in in circulation in the country continued at the same rate and they continued printing money so basically the price they they put was fake yeah it wasn't like representing the reality of the of the the money in 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 circulation and the money in the reserves <coughs> and well they basically continued doing that and they were and they because the money the because it wasn't the real price they began putting <coughs> um like al allowances to people so they you could you can buy only three thousand dollars a year and that was like limited and limited every year until it was like four hundred dollars a year mm -hmm. and then they stopped doing that and yeah you cannot get dollars anymore and for companies it was the same if they wanted to import they needed to send what they wanted to import to the government and they will they would approve or not approve to give them the the the, the dollars so they could import things so basically yeah they, they had a distortionary really really distortionary price of the dollar that it was just fake in, in one moment it was like the dollar was 10 for the government but the real price uh, taking into account the reserves and the currency that was in circulation, it was like three hundred thousand or something like that. Okay. So, so yeah, you can imagine how 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 they took that for corruption as well. Yeah, so I they can could imagine. get dollars. Yeah, they could get dollars at ten bolivars, while the rest of the country could get it like one for ten thousand or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I don't know if that was what, but um. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm gonna leave now. Um, I didn't notice I was still on on the disc. Gotcha. <clears throat> All right, be careful, buddy.